What do we want? Bounce. What don't we want? Mush. And in the last episode, mung beans utterly failed their task. Or did I fail mung beans? Hello friends and not yet friends, welcome back to Mary's Test Kitchen where Willet Tofu continues. There's good reasons why soy is traditionally used for tofu, whether fresh harvested or dried and rehydrated. Mature soybeans are high in protein and low in starch. So when they're ground down with water and the fiber is filtered out, the milk can be coagulated, that is separated with mineral salts and or acids, becoming fresh soy curds and clear whey. The curds are then pressed and the results are delightful bouncy blocks which can be flavored or not and hold up in all kinds of cooking. We know from a previous test using fava beans that removing the starch gives us the best chance for that bouncy block while using non-soy legumes, nuts and seeds. But leaving in the starch makes a waterlogged mushy thing that would be an insult to call tofu. I was very sure that mung beans would work so long as we extracted the higher starch content before the coagulation step, I mean, it's worked for us before, with split peas, chickpeas, fava beans, and more. So what went wrong with mung beans last time? One suspect was the hot water soak. Remember, I soaked everything in hot water to shorten the soaking time. It was one hour in hot water versus overnight in cold. And it worked before with split pigeon peas. But your comments convinced me that maybe, just maybe, that was actually the problem. So this time, I measured out another pound of mung beans from the same package as last time. It got plenty of cold water for an overnight soak in the fridge. The next day, our split mung beans are nice and plump, and you can see this layer of starch has already separated. These are the two batches side by side, so you can see the difference between the hot soak and the cold soak. I'll go through the rest of the traditional process, I mean our modern traditional process using a high speed blender instead of a stone grinder. The puree goes into my trusty nut milk bag where we'll separate the mung bean milk from the fiber. This leftover pulp is what I want to see, no chunky bits visible. As always, I never throw out the pulp. We can use it in place of other low carb fiber flours or use it to thicken soups. Crackers are a possibility. But first, I've got to continue making milk with the other half of our soaked mung beans. Based on this nutrition label, 35 grams of these mung beans have 21 grams of carbs. So if we take away the fiber and the sugar, we can deduce 18 grams of starch. Multiply that into one pound of mung beans and we should have 231 grams of starch within. There was some in the soaking water as you can probably recall, and I wish I thought to settle that out to measure it before draining, but I didn't. However, most of it should still be in this milk, so let's let it settle out. Past experience has already taught us that leaving it for more than an hour does not typically help. But this time, because of last time's failure, let's give it its best chance. There, you can see the layer of starch at the bottom. Can you see the difference from last time? Is there a difference? I'll gently scoop out the top starch-free layer of milk as usual. Then cook the milk. Oh, we never did a milk taste test. Let's do that. Hmm, it's similar to soy milk, but it has a slight, slight bitter aftertaste. It's not like delicious like the chickpea milk, but it is not bad. Add our usual coagulant mixture of gypsum and water at the usual temperature. Cover it for the usual time and see what kind of curds we get. Yes. 
be dangerous. Oh my god, get on. This lid does not want to go on. You can see there's like some leakage already. There's a lot of leakage already. Ah! Oh no. I'm gonna twist this even more. I'm gonna save this for something else. Put this in the fridge. See you tomorrow. My friends, it's the next morning and things are not looking good. In my opinion, this looks, this, I mean, looks a lot like our previous round. <laughs> I'm just going to get rid of this excess whey that's in here. There's all sorts of whey stuff in there. Ooh, look at that. That is not good. <laughs> doesn't want to come out. All right, let's get out of here. I mean, the feeling feels better than last time, so we'll see, we'll see. Oh, shoot, I meant to tap it, and I went straight through. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how firm that is. But it tastes okay, it tastes pretty good. So for some reason, our last batch tasted terrible, this batch tastes pretty good. I mean, it tastes like mung beans. I don't know. Some of the edge bits are a bit more firm, but they're not bouncy like tofu. It's more like compressed mashed potatoes, if you know what I mean. Don't you worry, this is not going to waste. More lemon and a little bit more salt. I do, I do want a little bit of olive oil. Just a teaspoon, I think, will do. Garlic. This might be the smoothest, most luxurious hummus I've ever made. Nay, ever tasted. But I did feel some tinnitus symptoms after having a bit of this. Okay, I had a lot of this, so it's not for my fellow ketoers. But this also tells me the starch isolation was not complete. I'll have to be even more careful at that step next time because... You guys, I still have a lot of mung beans. I was just so sure that mung beans would work, that I bought the biggest bag I could find. Which means we can't give up here. If you've watched my video all about using different coagulants for soy tofu, you know that we can make soy tofu with the traditional tofu making mineral salts like gypsum and nagari, as well as Epsom salts, so long as they are labeled for internal use. But we can also use acids like lemon juice and vinegar. So let's give it a try. I used the exact same milk making method as before, cooking it up, and then this time we're going to use lemon juice mixed with room temperature water to help distribute the acid evenly. After covering and waiting the usual amount of time, this is even worse! Oh, it's milky, which means the coagulation was not complete. Something has gotten in the way. Our protein-rich curds have not fully separated from the whey. In soy tofu troubleshooting, if this happens to you, I always advise just applying a little more heat. Sometimes the ambient temperature is too low and the coagulation is not happening properly because we don't have enough heat. That's usually the issue. So I applied a little more heat and waited a little longer. It seems this is not our issue. The next possibility to check off is maybe we need a higher concentration of the coagulant. Maybe for some reason, mung bean milk just needs more, so I'll add more. It didn't work, my friends. At this point, I'm in such despair that I, I'm not even thinking, so I'm adding vinegar as well to make it even more acidic, and then trying the heat again, and no. 
Honestly, I'm side-eyeing this particular bag of mung beans. Maybe that's the issue. And or we still have some starch interference going on as well, so I can blame the mung beans or I can blame myself. I don't know, but I don't want to change too many variables. So continuing with our last pound of mung beans, I did an overnight soak as before and started the milk the same way as before. But this time, after the settling step, I'm pouring off the top. Usually we don't do this because at the end of the pour it kicks up starch, but I am leaving quite a bit of milk behind. Maybe mung bean starch just kicks up more easily than the others, that's why I'm foregoing the scoop. The milk itself is looking good, so let's cook this. For the coagulant this time, I'm going to go ahead and use white vinegar. For the final time, cover and wait afterwards. Oh, what do we have here? The curds are separated and we have clear whey. They look a lot like, like the last episode. We have come full circle, my friends. So how about a fresh curd taste test? Will the vinegar affect the flavor? Delicious, with a hint of vinegar. <laughs> So I'm gonna go ahead and put the curds in my favorite tofu press. As always, I'll leave the affiliate links below for my favorite tofu press and my favorite nut milk bag. But I also just got this new stainless steel tofu press, which I personally have been looking for for a while at a, at a good price. Um, I haven't actually used it yet, so <laughs> I'll let you know eventually how it goes. Uh, but I'll leave the link for that one as well, just in case you were looking for a stainless steel one without plastic. Back to the video to press these curds. Drain away the clear whey and also have a little taste test. Again, it's good. I can hardly believe it doesn't taste vinegary. It just tastes good. It's like a savory vegetable broth. Definitely gonna go ahead and use this in my next soup. So today I'm pretty happy. The only thing I'm a little bit not happy about is how much this burnt on the bottom. Check this out. Oh, check that stainless steel out. This is gonna be easy to clean. Oh my God. Wait, why am I happy about having to clean this pot? So anyways, the moral of the story is if at first you don't succeed, try, try, try and try again. This whole thing goes in the fridge and we'll see the next day if we have success. And it is the next day. So just tell me in the comments from one to 10, one being not optimistic and 10 being like, totally for sure. How optimistic are you? I am 10 out of 10 optimistic. Mm. Feeling firm. On a scale of one to 10, how disappointed are you? Like I am disappointed to the point of lividity. Is that a word? What I mean is I'm outraged. This is a travesty. I was so hopeful, but this looks the same as the mushy mung bean tofu we made last month. On the other hand, the taste is better. It doesn't have that slight, slight bitter aftertaste and it's not quite as mushy. Let's try a couple things before we totally give up. Oh no, they're breaking apart. Oh, that didn't help at all. It tastes good though. I mean, it tastes like mung beans. I'm gonna add oil to these and I'm gonna leave these plain.
try this, let's try this one. The exterior is a little bit better. It's still, yeah. The coating seems to have helped to keep the moisture inside, which is nice. That's good. It's better. It's like really, really dry chicken. You know how chicken breast can get when it's really, really dry? It's better than that. <laughs> you know what? Not that bad. All right, last one. So it's not bouncy, you know? It's breaking apart. But wait, why is this one better? The oil-free one is better. That's interesting. In summary, so this mung bean tofu really is edible, but was it worth it? Heck no. Like even the first step of handling the soaked mung beans, because they're all bitty and they're sticky, it was really annoying. I would much prefer the larger size legumes like fava beans and chickpeas. Anyways, I still have two more things to try before giving up completely on mung beans. Please give this video a thumbs up for good luck and subscribe if you haven't already. Bye for now.